Welcome back, everyone. Going into the second half here, uh, or second hour rather, of roleplay Swan Song. Adam, tell the us about half. these bond ma bandmates, not bondmates. <laughs> the second half of the first half. Uh, do you? Okay. Well, I guess I want to give you an opportunity. Uh, do you do anything, or do you? Are you just in the car? Because if you don't want to do anything, we can we can jump to the meeting. Um. I mean, I suppose that I would say something because I'm actually seeing something that I saw. Okay. To whom do you say that and what do you say? Um, who's, it, we're just being dri driven by a driver. Yeah, it's it's not even... It's a driverless car. It's just they sent a... Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then would there be a way that we could stop it? Yeah, totally. If I just, if I just start going, stop the car. Yeah, stop yeah. Stop the car. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you haven't got, like, you're the last one to get in, so the door is still open, so you, like, looked over oh, your shoulder. Oh, we were saw. getting in, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you're just getting in. in. <gasps> Fucking slow the car down already, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, so if I, you just I don't get I, in. I, I, then, I, I, yeah, I was thinking more about this. So I think I, I like, maybe just don't get into the car. Okay. So, Alfarius, you, you notice, yeah, Piani just, like, stops and is looking at something outside and not getting in the car. <clears throat> As she does that, I... Like, um, I would be the last one to get in the car. That's what he would do. So he opens his chest, pulls out his pistol, and, like, puts it across the back of the car and just aims in the direction she's <laughs> claiming towards. I, and I think... Uh, and he sees his kids, and there's a little bit of a that, like, snaps face. it. Uh, it snaps me out of it. I'm like, put it away. Put it... But I, I've seen those guys before. Hey, what the fuck are you two doing? Would you get in the Shut car? <laughs> I've... <laughs> Hold on, uh, sir. Are, I'm sorry. The famous Piani. These people are. I don't go with them anywhere. They're not part of my crew. Just <laughs> just no, sir, the car are is you just crazy. talking to the car? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Maybe like, uh, maybe I like have this moment where I'm like, okay, wait. The Higgs is not even gonna like. I'm just gonna. So I turn to Alfarius after like going to, and I grab him in the most sort of like serious way. And I'm like, I don't think I like what comes next. You're gonna have to be more. What, what are you? What's going on? You just you'll have to believe me, but I saw this in a dream last night, and it didn't. It didn't end. It. I'm. It didn't end well. I've had experience with their MAS before in terms of predictive abilities. Yeah, I'm, I'm also close enough to hear this, right? Yep. Yeah, like that's that's major red flags for Eric. If if hey, you're yeah. gonna have to be more clear if I'm to do my job, what what is coming? Yeah, I I asked her. I mean, maybe at that point I'm like, you know, like you just see Piotti like man and then black fucking pods and fucking thing, you know, like in the whole yeah. sort of you say it all, like you you're just exclaiming it all? Black fucking pods and the thing and yeah. Uh, I think at that point I'm like think about I've been documenting it all this time. Pi kind of like pushed me the the you know a couple nights ago. I think at this point I'm just like fuck it. I have to like I I actually saw something and this might be the maybe the second time and I don't think I said anything the first time. So in mm -hmm. my head I'm like yes I just have to fucking say everything. I don't care if I'm crazy or not. I, so, I guess I get out of the car and I'm just like what. What the fuck's going on here? What are we what are we chatting about? Can we not do this in, in motion to the meeting that we're going to be late for? Afarius, what's going on? Miss Pick has had a dream about, <laughs> about an aerial assault from Pods. Miss Pick is a precognitive. I think we should give a heavy dose of, of authority to her dreams. I look up, but I'm just like, from up there, we're just going to have some land on us? I mean, that's pretty far-fetched. Adam, what? I don't. I don't know anything about like what she's describing. Do I? Like wolves with one eye are fairly evocative within my cultural history. Yeah, make a make a culture cigarette roll. I think I probably don't have culture cigarette. Exactly. <laughs> no, I don't. Thus proving my point, yep. Mr. Okay. Lumpkin. Now go ahead and just uh, just roll a. Um, like uh, intelligence, one. intelligence at minus one. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Boop. Intelligence. Oh, not bad. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, well, wolves and things that have one eye are both relevant to to Sigurd culture. Also, like a big warrior with an axe and a long beard. That those three things together, kind of, yeah, you're getting a Sigurd vibe for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What what do you, you what have you seen before? Have you seen us stepping into this car, Piani? What what's triggering it right here? It's these, and I I point over to the band guys and. I'm like, it's them. What happens to them? They're about to get hit by the thing. I don't. It's just that are in the sequence of events. What well, is the what, timeline? Yeah, know? what's the timeline? Where are they at? It's if a there's a sequence, frame, it could have been twelve hours. I don't know. I I can't. I'm just. I'm just telling you what I saw. Okay. It corresponds directly. I didn't fucking see that this guy was wearing a red shirt okay. for no reason. You said that the recommendation, Mr. Hitt, Mr. Wilbur, is we go to this meeting, which will take us away from this location where apparently this event will occur. Okay. I mean, I'm going to go talk to the kids. I'll be right back. And I just walk over to the band. Okay, sure. So, yeah, you, you walk over and they seem to be in the middle of a, an argument about like a song where like the the guy holding the he's holding a guitar case he's taking out is like listen man i really think we should change up the chorus because nobody in this crowd is gonna and like as you walk up they both kind of turn their heads and the kid with the smoke like takes it out of his mouth hey is that you is, are you are you guys them i can't believe i'm seeing you guys here and they they kind of like the guy smoking a cigarette like nods he's like yeah yeah man we're we're raven's calls going on you fans. holy shit i've seen you guys like a couple of times before this is insane what what are you doing out here in the middle of nowhere yeah and the dude the dude like f- kind of like fl- he's got like long black hair and he like flips it out of his, out of his face and he's got like a little like rune like tattooed on one cheek and um on the on the back of his hand you can see like just coming up his sleeve uh, he's wearing like a denim jacket coming up his sleeve and onto the back of his uh, back of his hand um, like a tattoo that looks like like feathers or something. You can't quite make it out. Uh, he's like, you know, man, an Axamander is a great place for a show. They got that a good venue. We're doing a couple of little secret shows, though. So don't oh kinda... shit! Re- okay, all right. That's... He, like he looks over. He looks over his shoulder at a um. There's like a bar nearby, and uh, and he nods. He's like, yeah, real hush hush. So like, you know, don't tell. Yeah, no, that's your secret safe with me. I got that. I I didn't know you guys were touring still. I didn't know this was. I thought you guys were making a new album in, in the studio. What's been going on? <laughs> <laughs> and so while while you're talking, yeah, Rick, the dude, the like singer guy, like looks over at the the guitarist or drummer or whoever's like unloading the car. And they they share a look like, oh my god, this guy actually knows who we are. It's fucked up. And uh, and the guy goes back into like being cool guy mode. He looks over at you. And uh, he's like, yeah, you know, we were working on the album, but uh, I had a vision, man. And I just like, I knew I had to get out on the road. So, yeah, we started this tour, a little reinvigoration of the band. You know how it is. You mean, hold on, when when you say vision, you mean you smoke a little something? Or did you actually like have one of those visions, you know, like one of those uh, Mez top? Have you heard of those people? He, uh, (laughs) he, He nods and he's like, yeah, man. Yeah, I've got uh, that undi- undiagnosed shit. I-, I see things. I commune with the spirits, dude. He like finishes the cigarette and he throws it away. And you can see he's like starting to like put on an act. And he's like, he's like, I drank the sacred water, dude. And I like had a vision. And Odin was there, and he told me what was gonna happen. He's like, you gotta go on tour, bro. So here we are. This is step one. We're gonna do the whole sector, man. Damn. As as we- as soon as you get some money hey i heard that so you, you guys gotta come, you gotta come to the show and you like oh yeah so no i've already got tickets that's why i'm i'm just i'm blown away that i just found you guys out here in the middle of nowhere me and my friends up uh, uh, over there we're, we're on our way to we got some business in town you know we're kind of a small time uh gig but uh we're working our way out there we, we hope to be touring soon getting some studio time but anyways uh, i just wanted to, to say you got visions you guys i've heard you guys are into some some uh some cult lock activity you know yeah, yeah. true he can nods. you guys confirm those rumors or <laughs> he's like yeah well you know like if you really pay attention to our lyrics you know what we're really about you like and he like kind of like is he's putting on the 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 rock star spiel he's like yeah you know we we just like 
don't believe in anything, man. We just, it's the darkness. That's all there is out in space, darkness, man. So, you know, that's, that's really what we're about. Okay. No, I got that. I understood that from the first time I ever heard your music. God, shit, you not. Uh, I, I look, we got to get going to this meeting. I just want to say if, uh, something falls from the sky and crushes you and you die later today, just say that someone told you about it. All right. Just if one yeah. of you survives, just <laughs> yeah, they, they, they look at each other and, and the guy, the, the other guy, uh, I, the, the dude unloading is like, Steve, who the, and the guy like glares at him when he says Steve. And then he, he looks at, uh, he looks at you and, uh. <laughs> Nobody wants to be called Steve. No, <laughs> totally. And uh, yeah, he looks at you and, and he's like, man, if fire falls from the sky and crushes us before our show tonight, it'll be a bummer, but I'll see you in Valhalla, bro. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I'll see you at the show, bro. Have a good one. And uh, man, can't believe I met you guys. You have a nice day. All right. Keep up the good music. Okay. Yeah. So you, you turn and, and walk away and they're already like whispering to each other. The guy's like, what the hell, man? I told you to use my stage name when there's fans around. And he goes like, I'm sorry. Just, that guy was kind of weird. And then like they're whispering to each other as you, uh, as you walk away. Yeah. I get back to the group and I'm just like, those guys are a bunch of fucking idiots. One of them <laughs> I, seems to, to have, uh, you know, the same shit that you two have, but it, it doesn't seem he might've just been fucking around. I don't know. A piano. I mean, how sure are you? How sure is this thing? Is it a sure thing? Is it going to happen today? Or are they just destined to become some sort of summoning group? I don't even know if that's a thing. Can I can I step out for one like just one second here uh, from? So I want to rewind all the way back to one of the first visions I had, which was yeah. what I think was at this point, and Doni basically getting totally fucked uh yeah i mean you've had you've had a bunch of kind of apocalyptic visions places getting destroyed but i don't think i've ever said hey higgs i actually saw this happen or at least what i think was you know could have been another planet pretty sure it was that event so i just want to confirm before i say like it's happened one other time and I didn't tell you about the event, but I saw it and it happened. And this is exactly the same. Well, how, how, I mean, did it happen like same day? Is there a timeline and how you see these events? I don't know how that shit works. I didn't. It was, I think there's like a really long pause. I think it was the destruction of Aldoni. What you knew that was going to happen? It's not like I knew it was going to happen. I think I, I'm pretty sure I saw it before it did. I like not any sort of detail that could have prevented us from stopping it. But in this case, a detail matches up. I grab Piani's arm and just like drag her like ten feet away <laughs> from Alfarius, <laughs> and I'm I I look real <laughs> agitated. I'm like right in your face. I'm just like, Piani, what the fuck? You can't say this shit it's in front of like Alfarius. Everyone knows that the fucking planet blew up. I'm just saying. Yeah, I but if he knows it, that you fucking happened. knew it was going to happen. I did, but he's going to be a little like suspicious. I can, but I can't just, it's like I can't fucking tell people and just expect me to not be fucking crazy. It's like how you treat me right now, Higgs. I'm not saying you're fucking crazy. I'm saying don't say that shit in front of someone's home planet. It was there. I. <laughs> I think I actually go, I mean, no disrespect. Yeah, I'm okay. Fixing. That seems I, real I'm sincere. Sorry. Why don't you just yell I, it a little bit louder and make it more impersonal? What Piani? the fuck do you want me Out to do? Out of respect to Higgs, like, Alfarius could tell, like, he could listen in, but he, uh, when he, when you pulled her away, he didn't. But instead he frowned and looked at Eric and was like, this is very, this is very weird. Everything here is strange. Um... I personally am, am very concerned about this. I take precognitive dreams very seriously. I think we should probably try to find out from Piani if there's any way we can avoid being at the epicenter of what she saw. Uh, how far, I mean, like from where we were, where is that? Like, how far would I assume that was if I was actually putting distance to my dream? 
You mean like how far in terms of like time passing? No, in terms of location, right? If I saw that, oh. maybe I'm suddenly like, okay, hold on, let me find another detail that I might remember. It, you're not in the same place. It's the the van is the same. The the two kids are the same, but it yeah, and it, it's definitely the same like season. You know, you remember the the leaves and stuff. But the only other detail you remember that big statue. You remember a statue of the founder. Uh, if you could find that, that might help you put a place to it. I think that's where I start to go next. Yeah, I I go okay. First there was the band, and then I saw this, but. I haven't seen the statue. And that's what I saw the pods. What'd the statue so, look like? Uh, I guess I kind of explain. It's the, the, the leader. It's the founder of the university. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ramirez. Then, it's, it's maybe really I turned to Eric. I'm like, you'd know it's the, well, founder this, of the university. I mean, this, this guy, this guy's a big deal in sector history. Like he, he's the guy who was able to basically redesign the spike drive after the scream, uh, you know, like 400 years ago, um, he founded the university. He was like a scientist. He's kind of the, like Henry Ford of this current period of time. Um, everybody's like, Oh, that's the guy that invented the spike drive. Whereas it seems like people are like, Oh, Henry okay. Ford, the guy who invented the car. So I mean, like if I said his name, everyone would, everyone would know. like knowing Benjamin Franklin or Thomas Edison or something. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. He's a, a cultural fighter. And what's his name again? Uh, his name is Ramirez Al Mualim. I think I just say it was Ramirez. Ramirez Al Mualim. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Am I familiar enough with the university to know where that would be? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you could find out, but no, you. I mean, you didn't like study here. So. I guess we just like try to grab a student and be like, "Excuse me, I need you to tell me where the inventor of the spike drive is right now." <laughs> okay, so you you just grab a couple of a couple of like kids walking by with their backpacks and like yeah, <laughs> they look at each other and one of them one of them's like, "Uh, what, man? The spike drive, the inventor, he made it. Where is it?" <laughs> The guy's like, you need to chill out, <laughs> guy. Uh, the inventor of the spike drive has been dead for a really long time. No, he's here. He's he's on this campus. <laughs> he's very nearby. He shakes his head. He's like, no, no, dude, dude, you're confused. He's been dead for 400 years. I, like, and he like looks around. And he's like, he founded the university. That was a long ass time ago. Mr. Higgins, help. What? What do you need? <laughs> Tell this man or woman. Or whatever they are. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a couple of there's two students, there's a man and woman. They were they were like walking, some kind yeah. of like teenagers. Tell this man what we need. Well, Ferris is still at the car, just like looking between the two groups, and he's just like, I don't feel any more. I've never felt more cyborg than I do right now. <laughs> I'm I'm look. I'm sorry, uh, you two. This this person's a mental patient. I have to walk around with him. He slipped out of my hands. Uh, he's wondering where the statue of the person that built. The hyperdrive is it, uh, Eric? Is that what you said? Hyperdrive. Ramirez Almualim. That guy. There's a statue somewhere here on the on the moon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Big R. There's a statue of him. I mean, there's a bunch of them. Which one are you looking for? Like young period, old period? One of the big ones? One of the little ones? Uh, hold Johnny, on. Was he big or small, or young or old? <laughs> was. He big or small? It was, the, it was like a statue. Old. The he statue was, was pretty sizable. It was like one of those kind of like Oh, like Soviet, how big like, was the statues? Is yes. that what you're asking? Are you actually asking about his build? I mean, it's just like a normal guy. <laughs> There's the multiple statues, Piani. We need to know what he it's looks like. fucking huge. Okay. It, it was the big one, ma'am. It's, it's like big. there's the small, and then there's big, and then there's fucking huge. Okay. He, the uh, fucking huge one. Sorry. He, nod, he nods and he's like, and he turns to his friend and he's like, they're probably talking about the one outside the dean's office. And the other one's like, no, no, that one, th there's a sheet over it. They're fixing that one. What about, and they like, they, they go back and forth a couple of times and, and the guy's like, well, okay. So it's either the one by the dean's office, or there's one in the Southern Commons. It's like a ways off. You can take the monorail there, but it's like a three transfer. It, it'll take you like two hours. But if you really, I don't, are you guys doing like a, this is one of those like scavenger hunt things? 
No, uh, these two don't get out of the cuckoo's nest, if you know what I mean, too much. So <laughs> we're uh, giving them a tour of the moon before. See that guy over there? That's the prison guard, and I point to how far he is. <laughs> yeah, they both kind of like look over at you. I'll we're just it. doing a friendly little tour. Yeah, everyone's you know? like looking at me now, and, and he's like, kind of, like looks around, like <laughs> just doesn't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, it's like, no, we're just here. We're just here giving them a show. You know, you got to take uh, you got to take the crazies out sometimes before they take you out, you know? <laughs> so the, the girl comes over to you, uh, Eric, and, and she kind of like leans in and, and she's like, well, I hope you're having fun at the university. There's Please don't, all kinds don't of ma'am, don't, don't talk to him, ma'am. And she, she, she looks over at you like, I'm sure he's harmless. He seems fine. Ma'am, this, this criminal right here, this criminal blew up a spaceport with his mind. All right? Yeah, and his his friend or her friend grabs her and like like by the arm and kind of pulls her away. She's like, "Come on, man, we gotta we gotta get to class." Yeah, she like don't now, poke the beast. She's looking at you, Eric. Like, eh, don't blow up a space fort. Thank you I'm for sorry. the information, though. I'm sorry then, of yeah, the. Uh... She, he kind of like is like, "Okay, all right, we're gonna go," and like pulls pulls his friend away. Yeah. Okay, Eric. Uh, let's let's go back. I didn't mean that about the you know. <laughs> sorry if that hurt your feelings. I didn't mean that about that thing you actually did. <laughs> I mean, it was an accident. Do you shout that after them, or are you just saying, <laughs> yeah, 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 it was an accident. <laughs> okay. And then I just walked back to the group and. Uh, I, w- I was only trying to blow up a spaceship. Eric, stop talking to the natives. We got to go. <laughs> Look, uh, that thing's, a, it said it's about two hours here on some monorail or some shit. Look, Piani, I'm going to be straight with you. Did this uh, pod landing on this moon result in a, you know, cataclysmic event? Does this moon just go bye-bye after this? I don't know the answer to that. Let's just say what came out of the pods wasn't good. Okay. I mean, what came out of the pods? Can we just say what it was instead of what it wasn't? What's in the box? I, I tell him about the guy with the beard and the Gandalf looking dude, but he has an axe. Or Have I ever heard anything like that, Adam? And, uh, dude just sounds like a scary biker to you. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. hard to say. Scary or try hard. Yeah, I, either way. Like, zombie dog. He did have a cool zombie dog. It's true. Mm-hmm. Is it just one pod and he and this dog get out? Is that what you're saying? Uh, that was one of them, but there we were, were like right? oh, landing oh, right. Right. fire yeah. exploding yeah. all over. Right. This was just one that we the camera was on. All right, well, look, let's go have a spin. We'll see what happens, and then uh, you know we'll just get off the moon. We'll just take no. the moon and say no, then we'll just leave. There are different philosophies of thought regarding precognitive visions. Eric, get in the car. Let's talk while we uh, drive and talk. <laughs> I'm, getting in the, I'm getting in the car as this is going on. Some believe that. that by changing the circumstances of the vision, you can prevent the entire event from occurring in the first place. Some believe the event is destined to occur no matter what, and, and some believe that it's actually the psychic's responsibility to bring together the elements of the vision and force it into reality. Piani, where do you fall? Piani like starts to get really nervous about that, thinking like, whoa, 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 I didn't ask for this. Like, that's, I fucking didn't ask for this. Like, I'm, and I turn to Eric. I go, Eric, how are you going to make a fucking pod stop flying from fucking space down to Earth? Or wherever the fuck we are. Like, you know, the planet. Well, it's uh, it's it's Ash's principle, really. It's it's the, the theory that the psionic is not merely witnessing the strains of reality, but actually... A, a, a resonant node within the strands of time and space that, that can cause certain events to come to fruition or not. Um, certainly, it, it seems true that more advanced uh, precognitives do seem capable of rewiring the very fabric of reality in order to ensure certain events do occur or, or, or fail to occur. So um, Asha simply posited that this was uh, operating on a larger scale for the uh, precognitive visions that you seem to be experiencing. Look, how long do we have for the meeting? I don't know, probably, uh, you know. Oh, how long do we have before it? Uh, yes. I look at my <laughs> so you, Yeah, at this, I think at this point, yeah, you're like, oh, yeah. And you're like, bing, and the, the car is quietly like pinging because the doors are open. It's like, bing, bing, bing. And then occasionally a voice chimes and it's like, you are going to be late. You are going to be late. Bing, I guess I, bing, I, I, go, bing. I go, I go, you know, let's, let's 
table this for a second. Let's go to the meeting. Perhaps afterwards we visit the, the, the statue. But we have to all agree. If we hear even a hint of danger, if we hear anything, an alarm, any, we have to get the fuck out of here. Okay, yeah, sure. So Whatever. you believe that our futures are deterministic, or rather, are not. Which one is it? Not deterministic. We have control, free will, I think. Flammable, inflammable. At Cinder. this point, I'm pushing people in the car, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. We're driving. I'm in the yeah. car. And I, I think I like don't want to answer because I'm just sitting there going, like, I couldn't stop Andoni. I couldn't. How do you stop a planet from blowing up? How do you stop pods from raining from the sky? I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like mumbling to yourself. Okay, cool. Yeah. So the car, I guess we get the Higgs. You're like, get in, get in, get in. And you get in and close the door. And then we, we cut to the car pulling up in front of a like a really nice kind of like bistro restaurant. There's a, an open air kind of patio with all these like, because it's sci-fi, they're hover tables, still little tables like floating and like with chairs around them and all these kind of like nicely dressed people sitting out, you know, drinking mimosas and, and having brunch. Uh, and uh, the car stops and says like, you have arrived. Boop. And like all the doors like click and slide open. Okay. Yeah, I get, we get out. Okay. Okay. Or I get out. I assume everyone else does too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Sure. So when you walk up to the, uh, I guess there's a little like waiting area uh, outside the, the patio, uh, the, um, the concierge sees you and seems to recognize you uh, and, uh, and, uh, and well, like looks at you waiting for you to approach and says, uh, Captain, uh, your guest awaits. Please follow me. Okay. Uh, no one else talk, please. You guys are way too crazy today. With okay. All this fucking... I don't feel like I've done anything. <laughs> How far is he just... He just looks at you. I, I just kind of like put my hands up in the air. It's kind of like squeeze. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And then I start <laughs> and like walk to the meeting table. Okay. So the... the, the <laughs> the concierge takes you to a takes you to a table and is explaining along the way like uh, you'll find your menus embedded in the table. Simply wave your hand over the menu, and make your selection. Uh, if you haven't tried it before, our foie gras is delicious. Now I know it's a little early for foie gras, but why not live a little? And he walks you over to the table and and shows you to to sit down. Um, there are five chairs at uh, this table, one of which has a um, like a handbag sitting on it and a like a blazer draped over the back but whoever was sitting in the chair seems to be absent from their seat um and uh the concierge uh, seats you and says um uh, i'm sure the professor peng will be right back please have a look at the menus and as he gestures little like hollow menus appear with like 3d depictions of the various things you can order uh, and he uh, he heads back to the uh, to the front okay yeah i guess we're just waiting i just order water okay I don't order what food if we or... had precognitive <laughs> menus that could predict for you what your food would look like when it would arrive? Eric, those are called pictures, you stupid fuck. <laughs> pictures. <laughs> what if we had a device that could capture what something looks like in the past and send it into the future? Eric, so he's got like a slice of chocolate cake in front of him and he's like rotating it by like gesturing with it. He's just happily. <laughs> yes. Pictures, Eric. <laughs> Truly a work of all precogs. So we uh, we hear uh, uh, Karen Pang coming before uh, she actually arrives. We can hear her like high heel high heels clicking on the on the stone, and you turn to look as she gets closer, and you realize it's someone that's coming towards you. Um, and uh, yeah, she's wearing uh, like a white blouse and a uh, skirt that matches the blazer that's hanging over the back of the uh, of the jacket. It's a cream color. She's like quite dark skinned um, and has like a turquoise and silver necklace on. Um, and she smiles like when she sees you, um, her lipstick matches her necklace. And yeah, she, she gives off this smile. She's a very like severe haircut. Her hair is black and it's like very like chopped across the bangs and like straight down. Um, she looks like someone who's wearing understated but expensive clothing. Um, 
And when she walks over, uh, what do you what do you do, Higgs? You're probably in the chair closest to her, as I imagine. Yeah, I stand up, put my hand down, and say, "Yeah, Karen, it's a pleasure to meet you, uh, Wilbur Higgins the third. I, I love that shade of lipstick; it goes with the necklace so well." <laughs> she shakes your hand and she laughs, and uh, she's like, "I, I, I, I don't know what to say. Miss Van Dorn didn't tell me you were a um, cosmetics enthusiast." Well, uh, th- Van Dorn's interested in the other top, if you know what I'm saying. She doesn't really take too much note of what I say. She uh, she smiles and kind of politely makes like a vaguely like laughing sort of sound, like a polite laugh noise, and then uh, looks to um, to the table and she said, uh, "I presume this is your crew." Uh, yes, this is uh, this is Piani Pick, uh, the ship's computer person. <laughs> Uh, this is. She, she leans over. And she like shakes each person's hand uh, as you introduce them. Yeah, this is Eric, our lead engineer, and this is Alfares. He's our head of security. I reach through a holographic cake that has the number eight blinking over. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Alfares, she shakes your hand and she she gives you like a, a a bit of like a longer handshake and look than the than the rest. Um, this continues to confuse him. And uh, and she says. Um, she kind of like, yeah, like quirks a, an eyebrow a little bit and, and she says, um, you're Andonian, aren't you? I am. I'm so sorry for your loss. You are very kind to say so. And the first, and he kind of like looks back at the group to say so. <laughs> she, uh, she says, what, what happened on Andonian was an absolute tragedy. I, uh, I understand that it was a, a rogue Fotenhauer ship. Terrible, just terrible. Yeah. Well, uh, shall we? And she she sits down. I just kind of like look at the minion and just shake my head the entire time. It's like, so uh, what? Uh, I mean, let's just get down to business here. I already ordered some water. I'm we're not in the business of eating. We'd rather get the whatever you're here to tell us. Not in the business of eating. You're in the business of business. Okay. So she, uh, yeah, she <laughs> she says. Um, well, Miss Van Dorn wanted me to ask you how your research project had gone. Uh, I'm to report back to her about it. Uh, I understand this was under your operation. She looks at you, Eric. Oh, yes. No, it was a great success. And I like, you know, I, I pull up the um, the results of the thing. And then I, I kind of like catch myself. And then I kind of look over at, at Higgs. But you, uh, you could share whatever you want. Just don't tell her about that kid I killed. <laughs> Mr. Higgins. She doesn't, she doesn't like bat an eye. It doesn't like, it just like goes like, she just, she does that thing where you can tell she's really, really good at moving a conversation past stuff that she knows that other people have said that she's not supposed to have heard. Mm-hmm. So just like, it's like, it goes right through her. Yeah. Uh, and she, she just kind of carries on with, with Eric without acknowledging it. Yes. Uh, well, um, yes. Well, we, we performed these tests and, you know, he starts rattling off all the technical speech of like, you know, probably, slightly more advanced than he would expect her to be able to, to mm-hmm. follow, but not intentionally or anything like that. Um, yeah. And, so, and then so she, she lets you, I think she lets you carry on yeah. until she gets done listening where she's just like, okay, I've been polite, but instead of interrupting you, she looks at Higgs, like mm-hmm. waiting for you to interrupt him. Yeah. I mean, I, I think quickly Eric does eventually move on beyond the specifics and then he goes to the results and he's like, yeah, you know, we replicated this kind of uh, polymer and these kinds of you know, fuel additions and, you know, we registered a 412% increase in efficiency over, you know, et cetera. Sure. She, um, yeah, I think so she, she, she gives you the opportunity to finish and then, and then she says, um, good, well, I'll report that back to Ms. Van Dorn. And the students, they were cooperative, appropriately chastised for their late payments? Yeah, no, kids are great, you know. Kids are kids. <laughs> she laughs. Kids that's that's a very true statement, Captain. Yeah. We had a bit of a, a struggle. <laughs> we needed to be held down and explained. It was a little rough. It took a little while. We had, to, we had to wrestle with a real hard problem for a while. Uh, we eventually got it through their heads. <laughs> well, he got his head around it. Is what it was. Yeah, yeah, well done. Look, yeah. uh, Kara, I don't mean to uh, you know move things along too quickly, but what uh, what's your affiliation with this moon? What are you doing here? 
Oh, she uh, she says I'm a uh, I'm a professor of uh, xenosociology, I'm working oh. on my doctorate. Shindalians, maybe. She she lives at you when you say that, and she's no, like, I don't say that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a, a name that people might have heard, but I'll yeah, she's like, yeah. I'm a uh, yeah a professor of uh, of xenosociology. I'm just working on my doctorate here. Hmm. I have uh, some connections on Vinaya. Um, Rajani and I met there. Gotcha. Do you find that particularly useful? It seems like that would be a pretty random thing to have as a quality to be a part of a group. She uh, she says it's um it's it's a it's a strange field of study, not useful to a lot of people, but I'm just glad to be able to put it to use. You know, my uh, my parents always said I would uh, I'd die before I'd meet an alien, but she shrugs. Well, I just goes to show what parents know. Hmm? That's true. So Eric uh, nods kind of quietly to himself. Did uh, did you have a job for us? I remember you mentioning something like that. I might. There's... Also, Higgins, perhaps you can ask her about the caterpillars. I know that you've been pretty it's interested. Nay in on the insectoids, A. Uh, technically, it's not an insect, actually. An insect is classified by having six legs. <laughs> she, I think she, like, yeah, like you, Alfarius, she's paying uh, a lot of attention to you and is kind of like nodding when you say things and like smiling at the things that you say. You've definitely got her attention, for sure. My, uh, my compatriots, to, you know, every once in a while they take a part of the little blue fever and we appear on College Town. <laughs> oh, God. You know, I'm like shaking my head. I'm like, no. They get a little, no. uh, they get a little loose. <laughs> you know how it goes, ma'am. I'm sure some of your students do it as well. And if you don't, she, well, then you're naive. She, she actually, she says, um, well, that's in part something that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, Miss Van Dorn has a an associate here at the university who's been importing product for her for interested buyers, but of late has been uh, reducing his imports. Now, the amount of this product that's been going around on the planet hasn't lessened at all. It's just coming from somewhere else. You think and he's making it? She nods. Miss Van Dorn would like you to look into his supply chain for her. Okay. And if it is coming from somewhere else, she'd like you to shut it down. Sure. Uh, what's uh, what's payment? What are we what are we talking here? Miss Van Dorn and I spoke about this at length, and she's decided that it might be best. And please. Pardon me if I'm I'm being out of line. I'm I'm trying to pass on the information from her, but she told me that it might be best if this job were to represent uh, an ongoing source of income for you, rather than a single lump sum, as a way of our showing you that the syndicate is behind your crew. We were thinking five percent of gross profits from an Aximander for the next six months. Okay, and, uh, you know, 5% can mean a lot. What does that typically translate into? She, um, she says, uh, I, don't, I don't handle the numbers myself. We have accountants for that. But if you're interested in the deal, um, I can let Ms. Van Dorn know. And uh, we can come back to you with some projections for the next fiscal. What do you think? Sure. Yeah, I, the thing is, we don't want to be on the planet to, or the moon too long. So how long do you think all this will take? I suppose that depends on uh, depends on how efficient you are. Random question: Does this moon have any sort of uh, you know anti space uh, turrets or anything like that? Like if if it was to perhaps come under uh, attack from up above, would it have a way to defend itself here at the university? The planet and she looks up and, and you can basically see it most of the time like an Aximander the actual planet is quite a bit larger um and that's why you're the moon um but it's like a, a desert planet but it's it's got settlements she says the planetary government at large has a contract with the university to protect it in case of piracy or or attack but the university hasn't had any external threats of violence in two two and a half centuries it's pretty peaceful here for the most part okay all right, well, how about this? You uh, you go and talk with, uh, you know, Rajani. Let us know what 5% really means. So tell us what happened last quarter. And uh, we'll go ahead and go check it out. You got a name? You got a location? 
I do. The man you're looking for, and I'll, I'll have this information sent to you. His name is Vito Marsh. He's okay. a, um, a procurer. Uh, officially, I think his, uh, his job is something to do with uh, the economics department, but it's something that Ms. Van Dorn put in place to protect him, and now he's using it against us. You might have to do a little work to find him. What are perhaps the rules of engagement for such an oper operation? If you find out that he's crossed the syndicate, just kind of shrugs, like, to do what you have to do. But don't pull the trigger until you know that he's been disloyal. We can't have internal strife right now. There are big things happening at the syndicate, and a civil war is not something that we need. If Mr. Marsh has decided to work with a different branch of the syndicate, well, that's clan politics, and we'll have to move it up the chain. But if he's working with an outside source or he's gone independent, and you can prove this, feel free to do with him as you like. All right. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and check it out. Uh, let me know when you hear back from Ajani, and hopefully we can seal this up for uh, for the day and call it, a, call it a day's work, get paid, and we'll move on. She, uh, she nods. Well, uh, let's hop to it, gentlemen and lady. I stand up and chug the water. <laughs> yeah stand up drink an entire glass of sparkling water and then walk off yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay all right yeah so you leave and um she as you're walking away like she's already started like she pulls up a such like the holographic version of her like laptop and gets to work and you know, drinks the rest of the mimosa that was sitting in front of her stays there okay okay we're, we're headed to wherever what was his name start with a v yeah Vito. Vito Vito marsh yeah, Vito Marsh. It's the guy's name. Um, Vito. So yeah, where do you wanna where do you wanna find this guy? Where do you start? Uh, don't they? We'd go to like um, the administration office or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Sure. He's the supplier of Blue Fever, and he stopped supplying as much to her. But there's no, a, the, it's, there's it's, as the much. Way, it's the other way around. He's a like a mid level dealer for an X Men University. Uh -huh. Her clan supplies Blue Fever to him, and suddenly he's like, nah, I'm good. But there's, but there's as much. There's still Blue yeah. Fever on the planet, yeah. Yep. He's not asking for as much, but there's still the same on the market. Okay. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, so you're all walk you're walking out of you're walking out of the uh out of the bistro out towards the sort of thoroughfare where the cars move around. Yep. And then we're headed to the administration office. Does the car is the car still work for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So an X Mandarin University has like a um uh, like a fully automated um car system that like is owned by the the administration who picks people up and drops them off. And so the car you were in, like went to pick somebody else up, but outside of everywhere there's, you can use your own terminals or you can just hit a, there's like a call button. You can, you can call a car. Yeah, we call it and then we go to the administration office. Okay, sure. All right. So yeah, you get in the car and we wipe to, uh, to the office of the administrator. Uh, it's a big kind of like sweeping arc building in the Cabrales style. So lots of like white concrete uh, kind of gold tinted glass um and uh yeah and outside the front of it there's a big sort of cathedral uh walkway kind of area with some fountains and some grass and students are maybe there's some students playing like electro frisbee or whatever out in front space frisbee yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they're using the rings they wear around their neck to <laughs> so uh it's yes early. it's the frisbee of the future <laughs> exactly they're playing high lie <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you uh you, you pull up in your in your car and we see everybody getting out. Uh you know, Piani, about this psychic stuff, can you see what would happen? Basically what I'm asking here is if I go in there and ask a bunch of the wrong questions, could you see ahead so that I perhaps could know the right questions in finding this guy? I cannot. I'm sorry. Okay, what if we walk in there and there's a pillar of a guy behind him? It's it's more... Do you by chance I, have the power to create a future? It's. <laughs> I guess I like try to say it doesn't work in quite the time frame you think it does. It's more like a, you know, 
a decision I make or something that might happen in the next few moments. It's not over the course of a day, an hour, a year, or 10 <laughs> minutes, that- 20 minutes. Is this the is this the part where Piano takes Higgs hand and like it's a drop of water? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's talk about ripples. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I, so I guess I I just try to say, you know, if if I go in there with you and I know something's gonna happen, I can, you know, give you a tug, and you know. Oh, hey. <laughs> Only you know something's gonna happen. That, that escalated very quickly. <laughs> I can give you a job, a punch, a, a poke, even a poke. You fucking <laughs> you cyborg, sick, horny cyborg son of a bitch. She can really thrust you in a different direction. You know what I mean? Okay, no, well, I'm mean, in trouble. I'll make sure and pull out. <laughs> Listen, before before Alfarius joined the crew this one song, he starred in Horny Cyborg one through six. <laughs> I believe it's it. not a bright yeah, time. You gotta make a living. You gotta, gotta make, make a living. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh shit. All right. Well, yeah. Just let me know. I'd rather just get out of here quick. You know, just one and done, and then we're done. And we can go find this guy. Quick hitter. Yes, a quick hitter, Alfarius. But we're not hitting anyone. Okay. No, no weapons, please. These are. People trying to learn and get a college education. Oh, fuck. These people are idiots. Let's go inside. There's, <laughs> no, like there's no university inside. on Asa. There's a school of hard knocks, and that's it. Yeah. I just throw open the door like I'm a badass and walk in there. Like, hopefully the wind catches. Like, in Higgs mind, that's what he looks like. But he probably, like, trips and something. And, like, the fucking his jacket's, like, <laughs> yeah, messed you, up. You, you, you kick a door that's a pull door and then, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you you come inside and there's a there's a big open uh like open air atrium. There's some faint uh kind of like baroque music playing, some of the calming music playing in the background. Um and there are on either side uh hollow signs that show like the different like areas of inquiry. So like biology department, xenology department, engineering, sciences, the varying like heading off in different hallways into this this big building. And there's there's students kind of milling around in here. There's like a glass mezzanine above with more students on it uh, moving around um, the place is warm and, and sunny um, and i think that when you yeah you come in uh there's some students that go uh, go past you as you uh, as you enter okay yeah we just go up to the clerk okay yeah i mean there's a there's a series of like vi terminals that uh that will activate if you walk up to them you're like okay uh, yeah we work. walk up to it what like what are some of the prompts okay yeah the the hologram uh, appears it's a um uh, an Aximeter has its own set of custom. There's a, a couple of different um, sort of uh, academic helper VIs that appear. So this one up here is dressed kind of casually about like a, an imagined student median age. Um, uh, the hologram uh, appears uh, and says um, in kind of like a neutral, gender neutral voice, uh, just says, um, how can I help you today? Uh, yes, we need to locate uh, one... Uh... Vito Marsh, I believe he's a student here. I'm sorry, do you have your student identification on you, Mr. Marsh? No, we need to find Mr. Vito Marsh. I'm looking for him. Sounds like you're looking for a student. Do you know what faculty the student's in? Chemistry, maybe? (laughs) It's a good guess. There's a pause. Um... And the, the VI says, um, I can't find anyone in my database of that name in the chemistry department. Are you sure they have their department correct? Could you check to see if they are uh, perhaps graduated? Looking for an alumni? Let me check. Here we are. I have a Vito Marsh, alumni of the economics department. It looks like they finished their program three months ago. Do they uh, still reside here on campus somewhere? Oh, I can't help you with that. This is admissions. You need housing. Would you like me to show you how to get there? Yes. Do you have your comp? Do you have your compad handy? Hold it up to the display. Piani, do I have a compad handy? Do you have? I pull mine out and just hand it over to Higgs. (laughs) Okay, here you go. 
Okay. okay. Yeah. So you hold it. The um, the VI just puts its hand over top, and like a sort of cartoony like stream of like ones and zeros like pours out of its hand onto your data pad. Uh, the data pad lights up and shows you a little warning like you have a new app. Would you like to use it? And it's a little button for okay on it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you, you hit it. It brings up brings up like a full like map of the uh, of the the building. Uh, and the, the VI says, so you're right here. And one of the lights picks up. And they're like, if you just follow the map, you can find your way to the alumni department and to housing. They're both on the way. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Have a nice day. All right, we start. I turn around. I'm just like, well, that was easy. We'll go find out from housing. This way. <laughs> I just start walking. We're just, I'm just following around. So. I know which way we have to go. <laughs> Okay. All right. So you head off in that direction and uh, you get to housing. Um, housing is just like a sub a sub department in the same building. And uh, it's, uh, it's got a bunch of people waiting in a little waiting room. There's a display above with a, um, like a numerical counter that as you walk in, it ticks over to another number and someone gets up and walks over to a little help desk. Uh, there's a, a woman at the desk with a terminal um, and uh, some, there's some seats in the waiting area. Uh, there's a little like hollow display that most most people are watching. Somebody's like some people are playing games or looking at their their data pads, but most people are like watching the TV. Yeah, I walk over to the terminal. Okay. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a little like user terminal that says, um, you know, please take a number. Is there a way to talk to the person? Uh, she's talking to somebody right now. The person that just walked over to the uh, to the desk. What's the planet that we're from, or that this is the moon of? Uh, an Aximander. An Aximander. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I, I, like, cut in front of this person. You just, like, nudge them out of the way? Yeah, I kind of just, okay. like, push them out of the way. And... Yeah, so he, he's, like, he's talking to her, and he's, like, look, uh, I'm just waiting for my loan to come in, and then I can pay the housing bill. But then and you, like, push him out of the way, and he's, like, hey, asshole, I was... And then the, the woman kind of, like, starts to get up, and she's, like, excuse me, sir. Uh, Ma'am, I'm sorry. I'll I'll be done in just a moment, sir. Please please stand by. And they're both looking at each other like they were just angry at each other for a second, and now they're both like frustrated with you. Ma'am, I represent a uh, coalition of. Uh, I'm from an ex, you know, the planet, the ex Munder, you know, that we're <laughs> circling, and uh, we're here looking for. Uh, he seems I think he's an alumni of of this. Uh, of this fine institution and he seems to have gotten in some trouble so if you could just give me uh his location uh that would be great and uh, no harm will come to any of you in this building or this room <laughs> no harm will come. <laughs> she she's uh okay well roll roll a, roll a persuade let's <laughs> let's see how that goes let's say you lose, right. let's say you use your skills let me open my character sheet use them skills yeah uh persuade charisma no that's con charisma no assisted 11. Nice. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I think she stammers a little bit and she's like, uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I did not realize there was, um, I didn't expect a visit. Excuse me. Um, and she's like fiddling with her computer and you can see she's like kind of flustered and doesn't know how to help. Uh, but you've got her on the ropes, right? She, she has accepted your authority and, and like the story sticks. So if you put keep pushing on her, she's more likely to give you what you, uh, what yeah. you want. I'm just like, we need to locate uh, one Marsh, uh, first name Vito. I think um, it, uh, I think he graduated um, uh, three three months ago. It seems Vito Marsh. Vito Marsh. Uh, yes. Uh, one second. Then she's like typing. She's like uh, V I T O. Yes. That's uh, yes. I believe so. She types it in, and you can see her display. Like it's masked from one side, but it comes up, and she's scrolling through, and and uh, she says, uh, uh, "Yeah, yes, is this?" And she like turns the the screen around, she gestures, and it redisplays on the other side. Yeah, there's a picture of a um, uh, kind of like late twenties um, man. Uh, he's got uh, kind of like he looks kind of like he is grudgingly taking this picture. It's like a student ID picture of him. Uh, he looks kind of sour. He's got um, short hair, sideburns. Um, uh, his all his information is uh, is masked, so you just see the picture. Mr. Marsh took a long time to get through school, didn't he? Uh, I think she, Eric, she, ma'am, she likes to him. a little like she's not sure how to respond. It, it's all right, ma'am. He creeps us all out sometimes. <laughs> uh, is he still here on uh, on the moon? Is there any way you could tell me that? It would be uh, mighty helpful. 
I, I don't think I'm supposed to give out information like that. Um, it's a privacy policy of the university. Ma'am, you ever killed anyone before? Uh, of course not. No. Why? Well, if you don't give me this person's location, you might be responsible for the death of thousands. She, she gasps and like, like touches her chest. Like she's having a hard time breathing. She's like, oh no, that sounds horrible. I, I, I would not want to be responsible for such a thing. Um, and she like turns the screen around and is like typing some more. Uh, I'm not going uh, to tell anyone or get you in trouble. We're just two people chatting here. Y yes, yes, no, of course. I, I just I just want to help. Um, I have a last known address here. Uh, I can, um, uh, and she's like looking for like a USB drive or something to like, like a, a stick to give you the information on. Uh, I mean, you can just put this on the compad if you want, if you want to just give me that file. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, please. And she like reaches for your, your compad. Yeah, I hand her Eric's compad. <laughs> okay. Right. She takes your compad and and puts it on a, a transducer like plate and passes the information to it and then uh, hands it back to you. Uh, she says uh, you should be able to find it in your internal memory there. Um, though this is uh, several months old, um, it looks like we have not heard from Mr. Marsh in some time. Uh, and she kind of okay. Like, I, I hope this helps. Oh yes, ma'am. This will be more than enough. It you know it gives us a thread and we can start somewhere with this. Thank you so much, ma'am and sir. I apologize. I'll let you two get back to yelling at each other. Yeah, the guy's already looking at his phone. He looks up. He's like, what? You're, I'm finished here, sir. You can continue on with your edumacation. <laughs> puts, puts his phone back in his pocket. And as soon as you walk away, he like goes right back into being like, look, I thought I had two months to pay this thing. And like gets up on the counter and she's all like flushed. And, and you've probably like helped him push her around too because she's so off balance. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just like, all right, follow me. We just go to the next location. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the, the address uh, is listed at, um, uh, there's like a, an address in a housing complex, um, some, you know, hour or so away from here, uh, called, um, uh, Cascade Estates. It's like a, a relatively upscale, um, kind of nice neighborhood of student housing kind of like uh, the end of career students, uh, can say there. Okay. And that's where he, he was or that's his last known address. Yeah. And okay. so you're going to head there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, as we're okay. going there, I tell or ask, I'm like, Eric, did you bring all of your equipment? Are you good to go if we need to get into a squabble? Oh, um, you mean, and I just sort of like sling my shotgun off of my shoulder. You mean this? Yes. Yes. That's, that's what I mean, Eric. Yes. I'm ready. Okay. And uh, how far is this good to go? Piani? You've got your do nothing attitude, right? You brought that. Okay, oh, we're good to go. <laughs> well, if, uh, don't don't draw your weapons until we need to, but uh, you know I'll I'll be the front man on this, and we'll just act like we're here doing a simple search. So just keep that up, and if anything does happen, we have uh, you know complete authority just to kill everyone. So here we go. Okay, all right, so you all do like a, a weapons check and then walk out the, the front doors of the uh, of the, the building. And I think we get a we get a silhouette. Higgs didn't get his action entrance, but as you walk away, you're silhouetted by the, the bright light uh, of the system sun uh, outside and walk out with your guns uh, headed to the uh, to these three. Great. All right, nice. let's take our uh, second break here, and then we'll come back and go into the third hour. So don't go nowhere. We'll be right back, guys, with more. We'll play Swan Song. We'll see you then. <laughs> 